Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. Now, we're about to have some big changes to our weather pattern, not only what I've been talking about the last few days, but these cooler temperatures that are coming in. They're going to be pretty cold, and the wind chills is going to make it feel even colder as it comes in. Plus, we got a bigger dip of cold air that's going to be coming in as we go through November. Now, you can see the latest information, our EPO, East Pacific Oscillation, not only showing this trough that's coming in, we have an even bigger one that's coming down all the way till the 6th. Plus, you're in this above average temperatures right now. This pattern's about to change as well. Your latest update on your AO, your Arctic Oscillation. That cool air is coming down on that system when it starts on the 6th. And we will have another one around later in October. This one will linger somewhere to around the 15th. Then we got an even bigger one that's going to come in as we go through November. So remember, your EPO is your high ridge or your deep trough on your west coast of the U.S. Everything comes in from the west. Going into that deep trough, bringing in all that cooler air as well. And that's going to shift towards the east all the way to around the 15th is when the cold air is staying around. Plus later in the 20s and then again in November. Plus our NAO, our North Atlantic Oscillation, showing that not only are we going to this little blocking pattern we're going to this little negative pattern as we go towards the beginning of october right there on the sixth we have another blocking pattern coming on nao this is going to put a big high pressure in the northern atlantic and let all this cool air come in from the central to the eastern side of the u.s plus when we get all that dip of that cold air all that big cold air is coming into the end of october to begin in november we're also going to be into a negative pattern for that as well. So that cold air is also coming to the central of the U.S. and the east coast of the U.S. And this is just like I've been showing you guys. So you go to that negative NAO, you get that blocking pattern in the northern Atlantic. So remember, this is going to happen again in the 20s of October. So this cool air is coming down again later on in October. Plus it's happening again big time as we go into the end of October into November to where this cool air is going to stay in this direction towards the center in the east side of the U.S., not the west. So you can see this on a Euro and the GFS. So as you look at your anomaly, your below average temperatures and your above average temperatures that you're going into. And remember, we're going into a deeper trough as we go towards October 6th. So as that trough comes on in, it is a huge trough, guys. Pretty much a broken apart, almost like we have a tropical jet pushing in. And we have all this cold air just pushing through all the way from the west, all the way to the central U.S., and going towards the east. That's as far as we can see with the euro. Now, normally you would take this with a grain of salt. It's towards the end of the run. It's 8 to 10 days away before this starts coming in. But it's been trending and has been seen by all the models. And all the models are in agreement that this is coming in, at least the one on the 6th. But you can see how you come into that first negative pattern on the beginning of October, jet stream coming all the way down. And then once you go towards the 6th of October, it breaks into a bigger pattern going way down into Mexico. A big break apart where all this cooler air is going to start coming across the U.S. At the same time, when this happens, this is going to form up a strong system in the upper Midwest. And this is going to create our severe weather that's going to start coming in from the 4th all the way through the 8th and maybe the 10th. It's just going to keep on coming in with these cool fronts as it goes lower and lower and lower. Now, you can also see this on the GFS. So as you go into the 6th, you get that big dip of that East Pacific Oscillation, that EPO, your jet stream breaking apart. You get all this cool air that starts busting in all into the U.S. And then you get that storm system still coming from the 5th all the way through to 10th and bringing that nasty cold front and the severe weather with that as well. So there's going to be a lot of severe weather also coming somewhere around the 5th through the 10th of October in front of these big push of this cold weather that's coming right in front of it. A big plume of cold air. So you can see this when you look a little bit closer. You're going into that deep trough. You're going into a high ridge, bringing those above average temperatures, guys. Then you have that cool air come plunging on through. And that's as far as you can see with the Ural. But you can also see this with the GFS, right when you go from the 5th into the 6th, it just carries maybe even some colder air coming in, according to the GFS. That's still too far to be confirmed on that. Maybe some 30s coming in. 
So far, I'm showing 40s with wind chills, maybe some 20s and 30s. But it is going to hang around so far as it goes through the middle of October. And just hang around for the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, possibly all the way into the Northeast. As that stays into that negative NAO pattern and this cool air just circles around. But you can also see with your temperatures, how you just stay below average on the West Coast, like we all know, above average on the high ridge. And as that cool comes on in, it brings in them cooler temperatures with it all across the U.S. and a little deeper in the South. And it does go out through the Northeast. It goes even further than that. You've seen it with GFS. As you go through the fifth, you have the cooler temperatures still on the West Coast, but now it's going to start making its way to the East. And as you go to the sixth, you can see it goes a little bit further. Now it's bringing freezing temperatures to the higher elevations and the mountains. And as you go to the seventh, it pushed all the way across towards the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley as well. But also now getting a strong wind chill. By the time you go through the seventh, now you have feels like in the 20s and 30s. 30s moving across a bigger area and you have some more moving in from Canada that's going to come in through the upper Midwest of the U.S. making y'all feel like 30s and 40s as well. Now you also can see the GFS agrees also by the time you go into the 7th this is the temperatures we're going to be on a little bit further to the east. Euro has all this in the northwest and southwest also in the cold temperatures but it's still coming towards the east and towards the south. But GFS is showing that on the 7th we're going to have cooler wind chills coming on in through the upper midwest and the north central bringing it into the 20s feel like temperatures guys. Also saying that on the 8th, past 10 days now, past what Euro sees, also confirming this cooler air is going to stay down all the way towards the south in the 40s is your temperatures. With your wind chills possibly feeling like you're in the 20s for a lot of people, for the north central, upper midwest, for the Great Lakes, Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, a lot of people feel like you're in the 20s. Also pushing further to the east on the 9th of October, guys, still affecting the south, the northeast, part of the Great Lakes in the upper Midwest. And on the 10th coming in again, but now cooler temperatures, now we have the 20s moving in. So now you're talking about below freezing temperatures moving into the upper Midwest by the 10th of October. And possibly bringing in the low 20s, maybe even the high teens. Feels like temperature wind chills with this, guys. Remember, I told you this a few days ago. It is still trending. But the good news is your next 6 to 10 day precipitation probability, just like I told y'all on the East Coast, enjoy them storms y'all have now. You have some more coming to the Northeast for tonight and tomorrow because then the high pressure is going to move in and it's going to be below average precipitation. At the same time, you still have it for the Northwest, the Upper Midwest, going all the way towards the South Central. So the South Central and the Deep South, y'all are well below average in y'all drought. This is going to do very well for y'all. As you go from the 5th into the 6th, then you start getting them storms. You get them storms from the cold front from the system moving in. You get the colder temperatures. It's 540. These are freezing temperatures moving in. Plus, you get a lot of low pressure buildup still on the east coast and the southeast. And all that tries to congeal a little bit towards the northeast. So there is going to be a lot of storms coming with this. Also, a lot of freezing temperatures. The Euro kind of agrees as well, starting on the 5th. Then you're going to start getting these front storms, front-induced storms, a lot of lift in the area, and it bringing some freezing temperatures, just not as much as the GFS just showed. But it is bringing severe weather at least all the way from the 3rd all the way to possibly the 7th and 8th, bringing those freezing temperatures for the upper Midwest and maybe even longer. Now, the good news is you can see all the rainfall that's going to come out of this. So you can see you have these storms coming into the northeast. This is starting tonight. I'll show you. You still have a train over Florida. But now you have these storms that's transitioned from the northwest. And once you go into the 2nd and 3rd of October, that first dip that we get, you're going to get some storms going from the south central, going all the way to the upper midwest. So there is going to be those storms coming in. Then you're going to have that bigger dip from the 4th through the 8th sometime in that time period. And you're going to have more storms forming on in a little bit further to the south and a little bit further to the east. So this is going to bring a lot of beneficial rainfall towards the south. And they do need it. They are an exceptional drought. Because right now, if you look at the legend, you can see that exceptional drought is this very dark reddish purple color right there. And you can see right here that you do have some drought, some extreme drought in all this red moving around the country, north central as well. But over here for the south and the deep south, they have that exceptional drought going on. So this is definitely going to help y'all get y'all rainfall 
a little bit better on the drought side. Hopefully it moves a little bit further to the east of Louisiana and Mississippi can get in on that as well. But this should help with y'all drought also for the north central as we go into this pattern. Plus, quick update on Fleep, because Fleep is doing some crazy stuff. Matter of fact, it is showing it is going to do the Fujiwara effect with that invest, and it's not even showing nowhere near Puerto Rico now. <laughs> and actually, now they have Tropical Storm Rena that has evolved with that invest, and it will go out into the Atlantic. It will be taking all the energy probably from Fleep. We will see. But you can see just how crazy this little pattern is is evolving from that. So for the southeast, these storms are going to continue to come over. I noticed that the heavy rainfall has shifted even further towards the east. So western Florida, you've gotten some heavy rainfall, but that should start lightening up for y'all. It's mostly going to be eastern Florida now. That's going to get a lot of the storms eastern and southern. Also for the northeast, y'all have some nasty little storms that's going to be moving through. So remember, this time and date above my head is central time. And it looks like it's going to be moving in truth sometime around midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. And staying all morning long, some nasty storms is just brewing up all afternoon for tomorrow, all the way until tomorrow night. So you got a nasty little group of storms that's going to be coming through for y'all as well. So just be aware of that. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate that most of all. I hope you have a very blessed day. Prepare for these colder temperatures, guys, that's coming in. And maybe even the freezing temperatures will move in after that. And remember, I have something even bigger coming in from the same pattern in November. So I will keep you updated. Now, today, real quick before we go, Psalm 51, 1 through 3. Thank you, God, for just being alive. <laughs> Amen. Have mercy upon me, O God according to thy love and kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from mine sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Amen. We all fall short of glory, guys. You just, the best thing we do is understand. I never want to push preaching or religion on anyone that ever comes to my channel. Just want you to know we're here for you ever need anything to talk about. I'm always here to listen. Hope you have a very blessed day. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. And I will see you all again tomorrow morning. And all glory always goes to God. Our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I pray he always blesses you and keeps you safe every day of your life. You and your families. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen.